You're listening to SM Media, the home of exclusive West of Scotland Football League content. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media West of Scotland football show. I'm Scott McPike, it is an absolute pleasure to be your host as always and I'm delighted to welcome this week's guest. It is a pleasure to welcome on the assistant manager of Adros and Winton Rovers, the one and only Chris McGowan. Chris, it is an absolute pleasure, thanks for coming on mate. I know, my, my, my pleasure. How are we? Aye, all good, aye, doing well. Doing it's all right. a busy, busy time. It really is, aye, then there's... Uh... About six birthdays in our family in April as well, uh, so that makes it even busier. Let's get into obviously talking about the Adrosan season so far. Played mm. 30, won 22, drew two, lost six, top of the league. First things first, like sitting top of the league, that's a really competitive league. Like, that's the one thing. Would you agree with that? Like, when you look at the top five, it looks like it's between the top five of the league. Must be good to be sitting there. Good to be up there. Um, points on the board as they say but um, there's a lot of games for mm. teams below us that um, they could pass us which uh, we again the old cliche we're concentrating on our own games um, I think there's four away two at home just simply need to win them need to win the six of them and see where it takes us you look at obviously the one statistic that, that stands out is 110 goals in those. That's and you look at the, the statistics, Aiden Ferris and 29 goals, Mark Curran and 22. Those two guys have been big players as well. But to have look, you look at the you're scoring a lot of goals, they're spread out as well. You've obviously got your two really good kind of goal scorers, but to see all those players in the in the kind of mix, it must give you a lot of confidence that there's there's goals been spread out. No, definitely. Um obviously they're they're the, the two main forwards. Um, they could be um, chipping in with the most, but um, as you say, it's kind of spread about the team. Um, I think um, Ryan Wilson, he'll be probably in double figures. Yeah. Um, followed closely by our captain, Liam McGuinness. Uh, a few of them have been down. Chris Craig's uh, an eight, David Gray in seven, so it shows you either. There's, 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 there's Colts all over the team. Um, probably the... The scoring of the goals isn't it, hasn't been a problem at all. Um, it's at the other end of conceding goals that, that looking at it, I think it's forty odd of uh, conceding forty two maybe. Yeah. Um, that's no where it should be. But when you when you're outscoring teams, um, then you, you sometimes can go over the line. So. And yeah. obviously, like in the summer, like you're selling Gavin, obviously the manager took the took the project on at Ross and like leave, kind of uh, leaving Dorai, that place had obviously uh, uh, Gavin had a good kind of good time there as a player as well. Like, what was the kind of reason? What was it about Ross that kind of made you want to go there? Well, it's kind of it wasn't directly from Dorai. Um, Gav's been to Dorai for I think about ten seasons or something like that. He had them. Um, he's playing. He's starting. He's from Dorai. Um, and then he was he was taking it, taking them over as a manager. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, I think I was I had just left Dublin Meadow, uh, and I went I signed with Pollock, and then to Pollock to Cowinning, and the link there is um, our old Meadow team. Um, yeah. We all played with Chris Strain, who was the manager at the bus at the time, Gavin and myself. So I went to play with Chris for a couple of seasons at the Buffs. Um, and back to back promotions were a good team got to the semi-final of the Scottish final of the West um, and then it came to the point where, where Gaff had been made to go there and with them being friends um, they spoke about it and I went to Dorai but when I was going to Dorai it was an experienced player going in there because it was a lot of young boys mm-hmm. but again a couple of seasons in we won the league um, and it was beginning to to peter out a wee bit um, with issues with the park. Um, the guy Donald, he got the park up and running really well. But to start with, any rain, the games, are, games were off. We ended up, the, the, league, the, the year we won the league, we played a few games at what's now the Buffs um, 
home park. Yeah. It was the the show park or whatever it was called mm-hmm. then. They didn't they, they were still at Abbey Park, I think. Um but for there, Gav had the opportunity to go in as assistant to Chris Strain mm-hmm. at Cowan. Um he decided to take it on. I was still a player at Dorai. The season was finished. <clears throat> the opportunity came that uh, they asked me if I would want to take the, the Dorai team. I still felt, even though I was, I don't know, 41, 42, that I uh, still had enough to, to give playing-wise, and I couldn't do both. Um, and then kind of COVID kicked in, yeah. and I went and I hadn't had done anything. I thought, right, that's it, bye. Uh, and then George Grierson had contacted me through Whitlitz to see to what come in, continue playing. I wasn't sure I went in, doing well. Um that well, this team I think finished up. We, we, we were doing well, um, and then the George Munn Rovers job came up. We about eight games to go last season, um, and I think they had kind of contacted Gav to see if he was interested. Uh, and off the back of that, he contacted me to see if I wanted to to go in with him. I played the last eight games, I think. Um, but I was predominantly in there as the assistant manager. And that it, it was kind of no to do right straight. We kind of went our separate ways for a wee bit and then both of these come in for there. But been a big turnaround. Um players that I think there's um currently only one is Aiden Ferris. I think yeah. that's um, left with what we took over. Um there was a few still um there throughout the season. Um my nephew John McFarlane was there, Ryan Morrow was still there. But as time went by this season for whatever reasons, uh, lack of game time, I think uh, the both of them moved on. And like obviously, like the yeah, your family, your brother Neil, for example, like Chris is obviously like Darvo. Like you, you, it's obviously been a a common thing in football. Like to see like Chris as well doing well at Darvo, and it's yeah. been a it's been a long kind of family thing as well. Like. Has it always been the kind of plan to get kind of get into coaching? Was that always your, what you wanted to do when you were playing? I never really thought about it, to be honest. Um, a bit of the Peter Pan thing going on. Like yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking to myself, I'm waiting on a shoulder operation, um, just wear and tear um, through the years. I like to say it's for lifting all the trophies, but <laughs> the doctors are only confirming that. But uh, I, it's one of the things which kind of... It's the kind of progression into it when I was the captain of a lot of the teams that I played with, and it's just that kind of the natural kind of order you think you're going to follow. But um, I got a wee taste of it when Christopher was um, freed to get free to uh, get free to come on up when I think he just turned 16 and um, he had the opportunity to go down to Stranraer. Mm. Um, they had a, I think it was like, a, I think they were under 18s or something like that. But I tried, but he wanted to do it. He wanted to get back playing every week. So we were doing that, we were doing the, the travel up and down. Um, and just so happened when I was down there, the guy that was taking it, it um, he'd said to me, look, do you want an active role in this? You're here anyway. And it ended up developing into the, the development squad, the Stranra 20s. Um, and we kind of transferred it for being at Stranra to the, the Troon area. Because we knew a lot of boys down here that had been released by Kilmarnock, Ayr, etc. A lot of them doing well. Um, and we had quite a good team. Um, from They were getting a bit of doing, I think, most weeks um, before we turned over. But then we, first season, we were there or thereabouts. Second season, they actually won the league. But there was a registration offence or something. They could dock three points and came second. Um, but a lot of the players, Kyle Turner, um, Cammy Elliott, people like that, Christopher, they've, they've been on to continue playing. There's a lot more, obviously. Um, one of the boys, David Gray, plays with us, the new. Yeah. But I had a wee taste of them. Um, but again, just decided that Christopher had broken into the first team. Um, so did a few of the other ones. The travelling was a nightmare. Um, so I decided that it was too difficult because I was, I was still playing. I was at Cowan at the time. So um, I stopped doing it but then I've kind of always in the latter years have helped out like Chris Strain or, or, or Gavin um, when I've been playing so it just kind of naturally fell in that 
uh, kind of stepped in as the assistant, but it, it's all right. It's, it, it's Disney Touch playing, if I'm, yeah. if I'm honest. Aye, definitely not. Like, we'll we'll touch about and obviously I'll draw some later on your result with the weekend and kind of what's what's coming up kind of between now and the end of the season. But big news, obviously, to start the kind of news. Kind of, I, I wasn't overly surprised to hear it. I was surprised it was immediate effect. To be fair, I thought it maybe be end of the season, but obviously Matt Kennedy has resigned as manager of Darvo. Obviously, you have a, a kind of personal connection with us with Chris. Obviously, being there, like. First of all, before we can I talk about kind of what's what the future holds for both Mac and Darvo, like he has done so well in there. And I know people will always say like the or oh, the money they've had and things like that. And I I don't buy into that because I think Mick has followed Mick as a manager at, at amateur level. He is clearly there's a reason he's he's a, a club like Darvo, it's because he's a good manager. And to be in the position he's in, obviously taking Darvo winning, I mean you know, being fair like Ayrshire, like 10 years ago, the thought of Darvo winning the league and potentially going up was unfathomable. So to to take part for him to take part in that journey as well, he deserves a lot of credit for the the way the way he's left Darvo. He's left Darvo in a far better place than he went there. Oh, hundred percent. I listen, the guy's a good manager. Um I've been to a few of Chris's games. Um and the way he conducts himself, Matt, is you can you can Spot tell. Shit. That he's uh, that he's good. Um, I just I think the the, the money thing you, you hear that uh, how much it's true you don't know. Um, they'll, they'll have a bigger budget than they did have back in the day. Yeah. Um, but no, listen, he's won back to back leagues. Um, probably going to come up short this season. Um, but for me, the big side of that's got to be he probably. He would probably uh take come in second or whatever they're going to do for the the, the senior Scottish Cup run, um and beating Aberdeen's a pinnacle. I don't know where he could have went for that, you know. Yeah. Um, it is very difficult for the players. Um, when you're playing Aberdeen on the telly, Falkirk on the telly, full houses to no disrespect, but then you're you're going and maybe going to a normal league team, and mm-hmm. it's, it's you're obviously trying to win. But we were there ourselves we, when we, we did a run with Arvin Meadow back in the day. And the following week after we had been beat up at Easter Road for Hibs, we were at home to Iron Bank, who at that point I think were a district league team. And we scored the last minute equaliser to take it to a, a replay at their back. Yeah. And it wasn't through lack of trying or lack of respect. It just, it just something just doesn't work. But, um, I think he's done a great job there. Um, I don't think anybody could say that he hasn't. Um, some some smashing players there, and uh, I can only speak to what I hear from some of the players and Chris for himself. But um, he's been he's been really good with them, so um, no complaints for to this end. Absolutely, yeah. I think he's obviously like I think you you touched on a good point because I remember thinking that at the time, like when the the week they beat Aberdeen, they went and played uh, Atherley. And drew yeah. and I think they lost three two, right. and from then there was a wee that. But as you say, like that that result, that moment, like being the pinnacle of football, like the everybody, the, the world was talking about that. So the two kind of sides of it is Mick. There is a lot of speculation about what where, where, where Mick's going to go next, and I think obviously there is something in it, and I, I don't think it would be getting mentioned if it wasn't. But like. Mick obviously is um is an ambitious guy, so he'll want somewhere that he could get his he's gonna teeth into. He'll, he won't want to go and take a, a job where it's like a stop gap. He'll want to, to build something that he's built at Darvo. And that's that's obviously what he's like. And you can you can see that. I know I've made out um it's like everything else. He'll probably want to manage at the highest level he can, the way players want to play at the highest level they can. So um excuse me, how you get there. Um, sometimes your stock's high and you need to move. I'm, I'm not saying that that's the the case by now, but mm-hmm. there, there's a time where um, sometimes it just runs its course and you do need to move on. But um, wherever he goes, I, I made out he'll, he'll do well. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, just got that about him, I think, you know, probably not just in, in football. He seems to be very successful away from football. Mm-hmm. So, um, just wish him all the best. Absolutely, yeah. Just a kind of quick point in Darvo, obviously going forward, like 
what do you, do you think it'll be a massive change in the the way the, the club obviously with Matt going like kind of there's still a bit of continuity obviously with Darrow and Southie to uh, staying on obviously an interim basis whether that leads to permanent we don't know it's still too early to say but what do you think do you think you'll see like a lot of the players that Matt's brought in maybe kind of move on or is that as as far is that too early to kind of think about? You, you, you find that um, I've involved Matt myself and the initial kind of thoughts for everybody is the logo he brought them in the logo a lot of times when it does settles Davo might be right for some of them you know no matter who the manager is a new manager might come in and, and no fancy the player but I wouldn't think um, I don't know um, but if, it's, it's quite a difficult one because if you um, I'm not sure of the kind of average age of the squad but um where Darvel are at at the moment, if you move to Darvel, there's a fair chance it's a step down at the moment, unless you do manage to get a move up the divisions. So, um, time will tell. Uh, I don't know what their, their plans are. They might need a wee freshen up. Mm-hmm. Um, new manager, new ideas. Um, whether it is um, Darrell and, and Southie or, or whoever comes in, they'll have their own ideas, their own players. So, time will tell. Yeah, absolutely. Time will definitely tell. It's going to be an interesting kind of time at, at Darvel. Just to run through the results at the at the weekend, and obviously midweek, we're recording this on Thursday night just to get all the kind of midweek games in. This yeah. this Monday, this Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, just messes with me and my the, the schedule of this podcast. But we're we're getting there. Uh, Darvel one, Paul at one, Clyde Bank two, Auchinleck one, Canberra's line now, Rob Roy three. Uh, Atherley now, Atherley two, Colwyn and one. They were the results on Saturday. Monday, obviously, we had Auchinleck four come now. Uh, we had Tuesday night, we had Glenarton beat Clyde Bank three two, Colwyn and beat Canberra's Lang three now away, and Wednesday night, Auchinleck beat Atherley three now. You look at obviously like the way the kind of it's now they're now getting like Auchinleck obviously a good example of a lot of games to catch up. Same with the Buffs, uh, Colwyn and. I'll touch on them. They obviously had a disappointing result on Saturday, but to bounce back against a team in a similar position like Canberra's Lang could prove to be massive for Kel- Kowani. I think so. They seem to hit a wee rut there. Um, obviously, they changed managers. And they had a few games in hand, I believe, for the teams round about them. But mm-hmm. again, when you're in a dogfight, sometimes it doesn't go for you. Um, I've seen a few of their games. I know some of their players. Um it's going to be difficult for them, yeah. but because um, the other teams round about them are fighting for their lives as well, and so it's all again the points on the board now for them. I think, um, but I think looking at it, yeah, they might have they might have enough in their squad, um, but again they'll need to really build on the result. Um, midweek, and I think it's Clyde Bank next for them. Play, I'm just just kind of running through the fixtures. They host Clyde Bank uh, away to Bees the week after, uh, away to Rob Roy. That could be really interesting. Home to Largs, yeah. away to Troon. Final game, they are away to Peters Hill. That could prove to be huge. huge. Yeah, I think though, when you look at it, Clyde Bank, um, maybe fourth in the league or so, um, a good team on their day. They're going to miss the big boy, um, Little, is it? Yeah, he's injured, yeah. He's injured, don't miss him. Um, but Clyde Bank won a day as good as ending that league. Um, again, B, <laughs> B, they're going for the title. You know, they're trying to get out of that line and you've obviously got the, the, the ex co winning manager, co winning boy. And, how impressed have uh, you been with him? How, you, how impressed have you been with him, though? Like the way, the way he's went in there, obviously, and just like from last season, I mean, we spoke about it, we spoke about it a lot, B, were lucky to stay up last season that's true. to be um, now in the position of winning the league and the Lowland League thing obviously they, they, they yeah. usually they, they would have the chance to go up obviously they can't due to the licence is that does it, I've heard people say like, that takes away from the league one if they do go on to do it that's nonsense no I don't think so because um, at the end of the day this this um, pyramid system thing is fairly new mm-hmm. um, but on your initial point uh Chris has done brilliant in there. I think he started um, probably until he get his, his own ideas over and get a feel of the squad and a couple of players in and that. Um, they started quite slow. Um, but, but I know him. Um, I know how he operates football-wise. I know him away for the football. Look, he, 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 he's not going to leave any stone unturned. You know, he's he's going to give it everything he's got. He's been good wherever he's been. Um, maybe a wee rough spell at winning. 
um, for a point, but he broke one into where they were, not single-handedly, but um, he knows what he's doing. He's brought in Kevin McDonald, uh, another one that was one of our teammates, uh, Irvin Meadow, played with Beath. Um, they've got a good mix in there. Um, he's he's doing what they need to do to win games. That's I think he's identified that. Um, he's got good players in key areas and. They're, they're obviously giving them enough go. At um, the end of the day, it's a, a points-driven game. Do you know, you, you, you push, it's all about winning. And they've went in a run now that they're, they're probably in the habit of winning. That um, It's just turning for them. And I think they will go over the line. Um, I hope not. I hope that will catch them for mm-hmm. my, my boys' um, sake. But I think they will go over the line. And it's thoroughly deserved. The end, the, the end of the league, whoever wins the league, is the best team. That's yeah. that's it in a nutshell. You can dress it up how you want, but whoever gets over that line at the end, that's that's the team that deserve it for me. We'll move into the first division. I think another very interesting weekend for a for a team. Obviously, Gart Cairn now set top on goal difference. They won away to St Caddox on Saturday, and then last night beat Shots at home one 0 Two very interesting results. Obviously, tight tight games for them, but to get they they wins they're big as well. I massive. Um, I don't think there's much between what maybe even the top five, six. Yeah, in that yeah. I think keep, you're right, um, yeah. There's, there's times you see them and you think, all oh, right, that's it's now Coburn there, it's now St. Caddox or Drum, whatever. And then Gap Cairns suddenly put a run together and and, and they're up there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I might be wrong, but I think they're all kind of playing each other. Well, it's it's next. very it's very yeah. interesting. So uh, this weekend we have Drumchapel play St Caddox, Gart Cairn play Ben Burb, and Coburnley play Johnson. So the top six all play each other. So again, it just shows you. And I've said about that league for the beginning. It's yeah. so so tight. I mean, it's anybody can beat anybody. You just need to look at some of the results as well over the weekend. Like Whitlitz Old Club obviously beating yeah. Ben Burb two 0 I think Gordon Pope is and. Ian have done such a good job there in the past few weeks. Like they've obviously had a difficult start to now be in the position where I think they're in, well, they're sitting in 11th. Yeah. What a job they've done in the past few weeks. Oh, incredible. And I think it seems to have turned on um, the cup final. I think yes, they, that's what they, I thought as well. Final, but I think for that moment on, they've used the disappointment to say, right, let, let's kick on, let's see what we can get. They're beating teams home and away that a few weeks ago it would have been how many? It would have been, it would have been looking to get the goal difference up in the games. But I know some of the players that are still there, um, a lot of them are good boys that are yeah. there. Um, they'll give you everything they've got. They, it's like, they never say die attitude, you know, and it's it's coming through. They're, they're um, looking at it. For me, they're probably going to be quite all right. They're going to be safe. They've got enough about them. Um, they've got enough points, enough games to play. Mm. But, a few a month or so ago, you'd never have thought so. And a big game for them as well on Saturday. They they yeah. are away to Nielsen. So again, another really interesting game. There's a lot like obviously Thornwood and Shorts picking up big wins as well. They'll be very yeah. like should rocks are up to seventh. Like it's it, again, we knew it was going to be a very, very tight lead. Forty five the the leaders on forty five points for twenty one games. It shows you just how tight it is. Like twenty four games as well. Like there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of football still to be played in that division. I don't think at both ends of the table that one's nearly done. No, it's not by yet, no. Second division, on the other hand, I think the top three yeah. uh, winning this weekend is very, very telling. Renfrew, obviously, the 3 0 win over Muir Kirk. Uh, Ashfield won 6 0 at Glasgow, uh, home at Glasgow United. May Ball beating St Anthony's as well, kind of fellow promotion challengers. Yeah. Again, just a really inter- uh, I have made a mistake there, sorry. Ashfield did not. Ashfield was last week. Uh, Persia drew 2-2 two, two away to fourth. Ardier won, Craig Mark won. Mary Hill, big one for them at the other side of the table. Wishaw as well. You look at that top three and you think Mabel have still got a lot of games to be played. A really interesting game, I think, this weekend. Mabel host Renfrew. Yeah, that's massive. Um, I don't really know much about the Renfrew side. Um, I know Mabel's a lot of experience. Mm. I obviously know Carlo but, um, that's, that, that takes some Paul Cameron. Um, a good signing in Tommy Maitland they brought in a yeah. with Tommy at Colwyn and again there's no frills about Tommy but he does a job um, I think they might have I think maybe we'll maybe just have a wee bit too much again that's not really based on because I don't know much about Renfrew but 
Uh, I'm looking at their squad and I'm thinking that it's it's got the experience and the right players. There's guys there, Blues Cup with that I played with at Dorai that he's won a league. Do you know that the, mm-hmm. they'll be wanting to kick on again? But as, as you say, it's, it's really tight and they, they kind of need to beat them through if they're, um, if they're going to try and claw it back. I think that's the absolute definition of a six point of that game because right. Maybole, obviously, they've got a lot of games to make up. You look at some of their games as well. <laughs> Uh, they're both Matt, like an elite for light. They've won the last four, so it shows you they're both coming into it in really good form. I think if you're a neutral, I think that's the game you would, you would go to at the weekend. I think that could be one of the games of the weekend. Third division, let's start with a drossing. 2 0 1 away to New Mains. Big win, obviously. Never an easy place to go, New Mains, as you'll, you'll know. To get that win, I mean, you look at likes of obviously like Vela Clyde winning uh, yesterday. Lark call winning as well. They've, they've got games to catch up. So to get that one on Saturday, how big was that? It was huge. We, we just, as I said but before, we just need to keep winning. Um, the rest it will take care of themselves. We can't be looking over our shoulder. But we know there's a lot of games that, um, but if they win them, mathematically they all go above us. But I think we'll be playing each other. We've got them yeah. to play. Um, listen, it's it's a good league. Um. New mains on Saturday was difficult. The conditions were difficult. The part was difficult. Um, but we found a way of getting over the line with a couple of players missing. Big players, Chrissy Craig for us, is the kind of guy that would, in these games, be a wee bit of the difference. Ryan Wilson, really, really quick. Tools that we could have used on Saturday, yeah. both of them missing. Um, but we found a way of getting um, over the line. But... Every time I'm looking at the midweek games and that, uh, i seen Villa played it through with Bells Hill. There was a few sending offs. Bells Hill are a good team. Um, we played them no long ago and beat them 2-0. Um, we've got we'll still to go there. Um, they're, they're a good, hard-working team. But we've seen that they had kind of dropped two points. You're hoping that, again, with the, the game being as quick on the flip side, when they played them last night, I think uh, Villa Clyde won one nil. Yeah. You're always you've always got an eye on them. Where hoping that the three or four of them slip up, you know, to to try and give us that wee bit of breathing space. That, but I think it's going to come down to the head to head games. Yeah. Um. Ultimately, um. But listen, these teams are good. We we went to Villa Clyde, um, and beat them three two. We're up three 0 We maybe five minutes to go, albeit. Are probably missing who I would consider the best player. Um, Thomas Sinclair, I played yeah. well. Uh, Paul, guy's excellent. Um, wasn't he playing that day? But I thought we were good that day. Um, anyway, but we get him back at our but um, it'll be a big game. Um, you know, it's it's we need to make sure we take care of all our other games before these games. What our next games, Lanark away. Who again? They're right on my, my coattail. Yeah. Um, Simon Hughes has got them going quite well. Again, Simon's one of our teammates for years gone by. Um, he's got them playing well. We beat them four 0 at home a few weeks ago. Um, but again, we we were exceptional in that game. Um, and I think that's the key. I think if everybody will say it, but for me, it's it's all about how we. Um, Take to the game, um, but I, it's, it's tight. It's tight. I wouldn't like to call it, but no, we, we, set out, we set out at the start of the season, as you do every season, to win the league. Um, we're top at the moment. We might come up short, but um, we just need to keep taking them off, winning yeah. the games. Yeah, and I think now it's obviously. I think the way it's kind of worked. There are five five teams going for three places, so it's going to be very yeah. intriguing. Lack call as well, Irving Vicks. There are two sides yeah. as well that could be be in the mix. What's interesting about this this season as though, obviously as well, it's going to go right to the wire because you look, there's still five. Like when you look at the website, there's five like pages of fixtures, so there's still a lot of football to be played in that division. Yeah, but I say it's going to come down. Can you know, the majority of teams can have to play each other? Yeah. Very very interesting. The other side of the league as well, like obviously, kind of some big results. Like you look at the likes, obviously your old club, Club Do Rye, yeah, like East Kilbride Thistle. Like there's, there's a, they'll want to get some wins in the board. I know they're obviously they're still right now they're sitting in a decent position. They're obviously above the drop, but Vela leaving are kind of motor motoring a wee bit. Like they'll be wanting to to just get some 
some some some security because Dorai have got a lot of games to play as well. Like yeah, when you look at Dorai, they've twenty four games left. Like they've they've twelve games left to play. So it's uh, it shows you just how weird. I mean, I I'd, I'd thought Dorai like with yourself like yourselves, and I, I thought of, like East Kilbride Thistle even. I thought they'd be title challengers. Like, I really did. Like, I thought there was a lot of teams yeah. in there. Yeah, the like, Peter's going away. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're, you're speaking about Vale Leaven. We still go to Vale Leaven. We beat them one 0 at home, um, down nil at half time. They were good. Um, yeah. It's 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 kind of difficult. Um, when the likes of that, you're looking down the bottom of the table, and you and the likes of Dorai, and Dorai have taken six points as off as this season. Um, there were there were no mugs. You know, we, we know what the the kind of mindset of these teams are. You know that they're out there, they're out there every game. Same as ourselves, mm-hmm. but look, looking at the, the the bottom, I think I think Royal Albert and Sockets are a wee bit far behind. But New Mains, especially at home, the, look, it's, it's difficult for teams to go and get points. Is it, we were you know, we are top of the league. We go there, we're averaging four goals a game, run about, and it's no nil at half time as well. A goal with maybe twenty to go, and then the last kick of the ball we score again. It's um, it, every game's tough, you know, and the, Especially, I, I think the big thing for us, I think we've got one midweek game. All our home games are 99% on. Um, we've got a great setup, a, a great uh, playing surface and that down there. So we don't I think we've got one midweek game. You're kind of hoping that the midweek games with people working at the level that we're at, that those points dropped um, for your favour. But again, it's the old one again that we... Take care of yourself. Just next game, just keep going. See where we go. Absolutely. It's going to be obviously a very interesting end of the season. Fourth division, obviously West Park United got the the first trophy. It was weird seeing the trophy being awarded in April, wasn't it? It's like, but nice. again, brilliant, brilliant season for them, obviously their first season up. So the it's pretty much decided the kind of top three. West Park yeah. sitting 60 points. Uh, Coast Athletic 56, three Rovers 54. They're three teams that are going to be big players in the third division next season. I know that they are in. I don't know much about West Park. Um, I'd seen their kind of trophy celebration and uh, a few players that I recognise. I think the guy is Eddie Ferns. Eddie Ferns was a guard here, and you've got Steve, you know, uh, Stephen Graham was at Glasgow uh, United. There's a lot of experience in there. Good yeah. players. Aye, these guys are good. Well, I know they stay there. They might do. Um, then I they'll be they'll be a team to be reckoned with. Coastal Athletic. Um, my wife's side of the family. Um, there's a a load of cousins for Coastside, and I only found out about three, four weeks ago um, that one of them plays with them. So yeah. one of my wife's cousins played with them, and I think they were already promoted weeks upon weeks ago. Yeah. Just well, I know they could kick on and go and win it, um, which they did, they, they fell short. But um, look, three, uh, back in the day, three Rovers were a big club, you know, in the south of Scotland, and uh, that, look, the, a lot of the teams, I feel, when you're looking at the leagues and that, them because of the kind of restructure they're all kind of in the rang leagues. Some of them I think will take a couple of seasons. I include myself in that. Um probably off the park as as well as on the park, but off the park that's I've been involved with a few clubs in Adrosin, second to none. Um the the committee, um the chairman, T woman, everything's bang on. Um the part the playing surface is tremendous. So um, I are these teams that teams that um, get promoted or win leagues and that they're, they're obviously doing something right, so they're going to be dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well. Obviously, like, there's a lot of ambitious clubs there. Like Coastside, obviously bringing Bailey in, and I think Bailey has been terrific as well. Like obviously, he's a young manager, he's, he's got a tune out. Brilliant. Like so, three of all. Like, I thought at the start of the season as well. I thought three would win this league. So. Right. But getting promoted, obviously, they're still they're, they're still ahead of schedule. So to to get that, and I think there's a few teams in that fourth division for next season. Like just to like you look at the likes. I don't know what the what the situation is with, with teams coming up, but I look at like Eglinton and Thorn, mm-hmm. for example, just two teams. They've got a lot of ideas for the future. Every day you're seeing Eglinton put a thing about who they're who they're bringing in, who they're kind of promoting. Yeah. So there's a lot of ambition there, and it's great to see. And it's obviously why this kind of pyramid system is working. Obviously, like Glenvale as well. They're bringing in guys for the amateurs, really kind of yeah. respected guys. So there's a lot of plans like Harmony Row as well, just a, another one. Gif, they're changing to Gifnock. So I think that league could be very, very good next season. Anyway. Aye, no, I think it will be. Aye. I think um, 
I think the as you said there, the, the likes of Eglinton, we're playing them in Saturday in a friendly. Yeah. Um, a couple of our players, well, one of our players, um, we brother plays with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we've got some good players across the board. There's a couple of guys that played with us that I play with them. Um, so aye, it'll be, it'll be interesting. We'll see what kind of level they're at. I know it's only a, a friendly, but um, we'll see where they're at um, on Saturday. Absolutely. It's it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And yeah. uh, all the best going forward. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks very much, everyone's tuned in. Please follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. And we'll be back next week for a new show. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Mm-hmm.